Hi folks, Annie from Mountain Crest Gardens here, and I have the pleasure of being with Jeff Moore today as part of our Succulent Expert series. He's been the owner of Solana Succulents here for the last 28 years in Solana Beach, California, and you're also the author of four succulent books, including aloes and agaves. So we've talked about aloes, now for the agaves. We've picked out three here to, to talk about. Mm -hmm. So which do you want to start with? Well, we'll start with the bright one right in front of me here. This Lovely. is agave lothantha quadricolor. I, you could argue it should be called tricolor because there's two greens and a yellow, but at times they can stress into a pinkish edge. So oh, that's, yeah. that's where the quadra comes from. Um, this plant is a wonderful small agave, doesn't get too big. It's a prolific offsetter. It's surprising to see one that doesn't have babies coming out the holes in the bottom of the pot because these things really take, really get going. When it first arrived in cultivation, uh, it was a very expensive eBay plant, but it, it is so enthusiastic about making babies, it's no longer rare, but it's a, it's a wonderful either container plant or in-ground plant here in California. Yeah. Oh. Are they, you know, you can pull the pups off or keep it in a container to keep it from spreading you, you a little bit? You should pull the pups off because yeah. it gets to be so much. You just basically get a, a pup with a rhizome and you can easily start new ones. Okay. It's not hard at all. Theoretically, it's an agave. It will bloom and die sometime. I can't recall ever seeing a Lopantha flower. It, they, <laughs> they should, but I've never seen one do it yet. Oh, funny. Oh, me? Okay. Next up. We have more. Uh, a lot of my plants I acquire without a name, so I have to I do my best guess at what this is. Yeah. This is probably agave royal spine, but it also could be a form of blue amber or blue emperor or one called black tooth. There's a lot, there's a lot of, of uh, similar hybrids that are hard to identify. I think the parentage on this is Macrocantha with Okahui or Victoria Regina. Okay, you can see those big black marginal spines there. Yeah, the closer you look at it, it's really pretty up close too. Yeah. It's a, you know, very unforgiving spines. You got to be careful with these guys. Don't fall on that one. Yeah, uh. they, they don't get large. This is a fairly large one out here. I think it might max out at about twice the size at the most. It will make pups, but not much. It's not, a, it's not an enthusiastic offsetter. Here's a smaller one that's very similar, yet it's different. This shows you the variability. Either oh, yeah. it could be the exact same seed parents done at different times by different growers, so they look different. You know, it's a different Grex. Uh -huh. um, this is Blue Ember, according to the grower I got it from. Uh, it's another very compact one. It's, it's a very similar looking plant. Yeah. Oh, so this one doesn't really have the teeth, and this one's got a little tiny it's, short You ones. know, that's just variability. Even in the business here, we do the best we can with names, but it's not, you can't always get them right. Or, yeah. You know, even object, they're just the people will argue. I mean, it's, it's it's hard to know exactly unless unless you kept the uh, information from the seed from when you started them from seed. It's hard to know what you have. Yeah, and some of them can change pretty significantly as they grow too. Yeah, well, growing in different conditions, oh. different places, so it's yeah. it's hard. You do the best you can. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is agave titanota. Oh. Now here is, here is a much larger uh, titanota, getting close to full size. They have they have very beautiful wicked woody kind of teeth it's a very popular plant right now yeah this oh. is a small seedling one that has been uh, neglected somewhat and that's just a nice healthy red stress it's yeah. not sick it's just it's just going through a little bit of duress right now that most succulents are okay with a little bit of duress and they'll color up at times that's really intense pigmentation it's like tie-dye happening there almost. it really is pretty I have customers ask me if that's if it's supposed to look like that, and I say yes, but don't count on it always looking like that. Because uh -huh. it actually should get in the bigger pot, drink a little more water, and probably will get greener when it does. Okay. But they do get fantastic, beautiful teeth as they get older. Yeah, that's like a classic shark tooth look on yes, it. Yes, it is. Oh, cool. And notice are really variable. In, in habitat, across regions, they're, they just, they blend into different plants. It gives oh. Bactiae and others, and there's a lot of arguments between experts on what is Titanota, which one is Oteroi. It's a it's a very complex batch of plants. Okay, and how is that one on puppy? Not a lot. It's 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 slow to offset, so you don't really get a lot of offsets on these. They have to grow these from seed typically. I see. Some forms do though. Okay. Nothing's absolute in botany. So we had our most prolific here, mm -hmm. and uh, how for culture would you say ease of growth? Well, we're here in Southern here? California. We're very spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> we stick them in the ground, and forget about them, and they just grow. But if, depending where you're at, they don't want it, most of these don't want to freeze. They're from rather temperate climates, so you might be able to grow them outdoors half the year and bring them inside sunny window or greenhouse for the other half of the year. Huh. Cactus mix, succulent soil, a light soil, water when wind dry every week or couple every couple of weeks. Uh, they're generally uh, low maintenance as long as they don't freeze. Yeah. 
our greenhouses are all up. We're in zone seven, mm -hmm. so we can get down maybe to zero sometimes. And there's a couple hardy ones we can grow outside. There's a few. A lot of them are on the cusp, though, so I'll cover them in the winter. That's the smart thing to do. And like yeah. I said, again, we're very spoiled here. We can. <laughs> Sorry. Tell me about it. Think <laughs> these succulents just want to grow. It seems like. Yeah. Well, they just take off. If I if I forget to uh, do anything with them, they just, just stick the roots down the ground. And they just you see the giants around here. They just grow. Yeah, it's becoming a forest. Well, thank you so much for sharing your lovely space and your deep, extensive knowledge with us. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us and happy succulenting.